of scripture. But I promise you, there is a rhema word in the house. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter number 16. I'm going to look at two verses. Verses 11 and 12. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. Looking at verses 11 and 12. And it reads as follows. 1 Samuel 16, 11 and 12. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Can we say amen? When we look at uh, Biazzo, taking by force, one of the reasons that people fail to walk in that is that they fail to realize who they are. They fail to understand that they are the ones chosen by God to take it by force and to walk in that authority some of you are sitting here and you're looking and you're wondering is it me I say to you yes it is you you are the one would you touch a neighbor get a good look at them and tell them say neighbor you are the one When we look at our text, God has rejected Saul from being king. And I need you to understand that even though Saul sat in the seat, God was removing him from the position. As he was being removed, there left a vacancy in the spirit realm. And I hear the Lord saying to us today, that he's preparing individuals in this season for the vacancy. Uh, the prophet of the Lord, Samuel, he goes to Bethlehem to anoint one of Jesse's sons as the next king. But I need you to make sure, I want to make sure you understand, he is not told who he's going to anoint. He's not told his name. He's not told what he looks like. He's just told it's one of Jesse's sons. So he gets the message and he tells them, he says, now Jesse, there's going to be something God's going to do with one of your sons. And we're going to have a special anointing service. And I need all of your sons to come. Because I don't know which one it is that God is going to use. So bring everybody, bring them all. Now, Jesse was told to bring all of his sons to the sacrifice, to the anointing service. But the Bible says he left David out. <laughs> there are those of you who are here today who know what it feels like to be left out. But I am here to pronounce over your life that your left out days are over. You are the one. Jesse is like many of us. He didn't give God what God asked for. He gave God 
what he wanted him to have. Do you see how when they leave David out, they are trying to downgrade him and leave him in the field? But you have to understand that in the kingdom, a downgrade is really an upgrade. Come on, sir. David is rejected by his father. He wasn't treated like the rest of his brothers. May I just leave a footnote to somebody whose family isn't treating them right. I want you to know that God can deliver you from being affected by dysfunctional family members. That's the appropriate way to say it. The more inappropriate way would be to say God can deliver you from crazy family members. <laughs> the Bible says that David was ruddy. He was reddish. The point that they're making in the text is not so much about the color of his skin. They're trying to make sure we understand that David didn't look like everybody else in his family. Jewish historians suggest that during the early years of David's life, even his legitimacy in the family was being questioned. And there were many times he was made to feel like an illegitimate child and an outcast. Could it be that Jesse was saying to David, Stay in the field. I'm not bringing you to this event because I don't want to put my mistake on display in the face of the prophet. If God is going to use somebody or something, it won't be my mistake. But I'm here to tell you that the promise that God has for you is bigger than your mistake and bigger than your foolishness. Do you understand God had the power to prevent David's conception? Yes, he did. But he allowed David to be conceived because he wanted David to show up and I say to you that you are here today in spite of what the enemy tried to do to stop you you are here today because you had to show up tell somebody I had to show up Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Eugene Peterson translates it in the Message Bible this way, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you you hoped for in the mind of David's father Jesse David was the unlikely son to be chosen by God or in, in essence he was saying I'm not going to bring you in because it probably won't be you just because people treat you less than who you are doesn't mean you have to act like it. It doesn't mean you have to receive it. So let me bring it down. Just because they treat you like a cheeseburger doesn't mean you are a cheeseburger. I'm here to pronounce over you you are not a cheeseburger. You are two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. You're a Big Mac, so act like it. Come on, somebody, and give him praise. <laughs> David wasn't called in with everybody else. The stature.
culture of his brothers could have minimized his presence. So God was saying to David, David, I'm not going to bring you in with your brothers. Mm -hmm. You'll get lost in their shadows if I do. I'm going to bring you in by yourself. But to bring you in by yourself, David, you've got to be willing to wait. Ah, are you catching it? The Bible lets us know in Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 27 and 14 tells us to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I'm here to encourage Encourage somebody to remain in your holding pattern until God gives you permission to land. It won't be long now. While David is waiting, he remains faithful to his assignment. Faithful to his assignment. The assignment was already prepared for David. But David had to get prepared for the assignment. God was saying, David, I'm teaching you how to be faithful over your daddy's flock so I can trust you with my flock. And I want to ask somebody who knows you're on the verge of a breakthrough and a blessing. Can God trust you with the next season that he's about to release in your life? Are you really ready for what God is about to turn over to you? Why are you asking me that, Pastor Riley? Because I hear the voice of God declaring it's about to happen. Get ready for what God is about to release unto you. I know you may be uncomfortable and discouraged where you are, but I hear the Lord saying, you are right where you are supposed to be. Come on, somebody. It may not feel good, but that's all. You are right where you are supposed to be. As we look at the text, David, didn't have a problem walking alone. If you are going to be all that God would have you to be, you've got to be willing to walk alone. Being in the field of rejection taught David how to walk alone. Because if you are going to be king or queen material, You've got to be delivered from people. Come on, somebody. Tell, touch your neighbor and say, you must be delivered from people. A little more monitor. Uh, because understand, uh, you cannot allow people to define who you are by where they found you. Just because you found me in the ditch, or as the bishop said, found me on the street, doesn't mean that's who I am. You got to see that there's something greater on the inside of me in spite of where you found me because God doesn't call us by our current state. He calls us by who we were created to be. Come on, here's somebody. Who are you created to be? Because God is calling out of you what he has already put in you for his glory. Come on and Give him some praise. In the field, I believe God had David in what I'd like to call the King Internship Program. Tell somebody there's a king and a queen in this field. <laughs> in the field of rejection, David was going through character development because you've got to win your private battles for God to take you public. 
May I say it again? You have to win your private battles for God to take you public. God is saying you got to win the battles in the field before you can stand up on the stage. You got to know how to slay the lion and the bear on the backside of the desert before I can put you on the main stage and them see you slay Goliath. But I want somebody to know that God has seen you you fight God has seen you taken by force and I hear the voice of the Lord declaring prepare yourself you're about to go public when David was in the field even though they had him hidden they knew where to find him they knew where he and some of you, the enemy is trying to make you feel that you are pushed back so far that when it's your time, they won't know how to get to you. The devil is a liar. God has not forgotten about you. I don't care if they've got you in the back, in the corner, in the booth, in the dark. God knows where you are and he knows how to find you. Come on in here. You are not defined by your job. You are not defined by your address. Your blessing is going to exceed your zip code. Your location belongs in God's GPS system it remains there and you don't have to worry when it's your time he can locate you if you're in the field he can locate you if you're in the ditch he can locate you if you're in the basement he can locate you if you're in the hood he can locate you if you're depressed he can locate you if you're discouraged he can locate you if you're filled with anxiety he can locate you. Thank God I'm in his GPS system. Come on and give him some praise. So the Bible says, the brothers, they walk by. You know, when I look at the text, there must have been something about his eldest brother that really looked like a king. Because the prophet almost got tricked. The, the text says he looked at him, he said, Woo, surely the Lord's anointed is before us. Maybe he was tall and muscular. You know how they say swole. Maybe he was swole. I don't know. His clothes fit real good, had the right haircut. He knew how to walk just like a king. And when the prophet thought he was the one, God says, hold up. He's not the one. And then it's like he taps the prophet over the shoulder and says, come over here, let me tell you something. Don't, 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 don't do that. I didn't choose. You are not here to choose. You are here to anoint who I have already chosen. And the one I chose, I didn't look at what he looked like on the outside. I chose him based on what was going on in his heart. Why the heart? Because I can dress anybody up and make them look good. But if your heart is messed up, come on here, somebody. God is saying, listen, I have chosen somebody who will keep their ear close to the mouth of God. I can dress up anybody. I can take drunk Joe from the street corner, standing out there at the corner beer and wine, and I can clean him up and put him on a nice suit and get him a haircut and put him on uh, some good shoes and some good smelling uh, cologne. Come on here, somebody. Bring him in on the front row and, and let him watch how we do it, you know. Let him watch how we clap and how we lift our hands and how we 
glory say glory be to God and he can go through all of the motions but if his heart is not right when the service is over he will take his good looking good smelling self back to the corner beer and wine you can dress anybody up but God is saying I chose somebody who's got a heart for me who's already prepared to receive what I have to say don't you dare get it mixed up Samuel God is a God is looking at the heart man is looking at the outward appearance or man is looking at the face there was a song that said smiling faces sometimes tell lies you can't go by what you see outside but no I got the right one So they go one by one. And God said, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then there were no more sons to walk. And, and, and so what I love is that the prophet know what he heard. He said, let me ask, come here, come here. Jesse, come here, come here, come here, come here. Didn't I tell you to bring all of your sons? Yes, sir. Did you bring all of your sons? Because I don't see another one. And God has said no to everybody you brought here. Jesse has to admit, I did not bring them all. In 2018, this is how Jesse would have said it. Well, see, what had happened was... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get, so, so who's left? My baby boy, the shorty of the family. He's in the field. He's taking care of the sheep. The prophet says, you got a big feast over here. Folk, we can smell the food, but we are not going to sit down until you bring in the one that's in the field. I want you to know that when God says it's your time, they won't be able to sit down until you come. Come on, yes, somebody. When God says you're the one and it's your time, everything will be held up until you step in the room. Come on, somebody, and give him some praise. Go get him. Go get him. Now you have to understand that when they get David, David doesn't have the advantages of his brothers. His brothers have been cleaning up, scrubbing, haircuts, getting on their good clothes, you know. They smelling good. They looking good. They got it all together. They run and get David from the field. He comes in from shepherding. He comes in from taking care of the sheep. And the Bible has, says nothing about him stopping by way of the bathroom to take a shower or stopping by way of the closet to change his clothes. He has to come in just as he is. He has to come in with his dirty clothes on. He has to come in smelling like the sheep. May I pause for a moment for those of you that are aspiring and perspiring to be a leader in the house of the Lord. Whatever you do, don't stop smelling like the sheep. You gotta stay close enough. Come on here somebody until you know how to minister to the needs of the people. And so here David walks in. He doesn't walk in all grand and everything. David just like, what? Okay, daddy, they say you want me. And here God says, that's the one. That's who? That's the one that the, the oil is flowing. Come on. That's the one. He's the one. He's the one. He doesn't look like everybody else, but he's the one. He doesn't talk like everybody else, but he's the one. He doesn't smell like everybody else, but he's the one. You got to understand when God says it's your time, David 
David was overlooked by his father, overlooked by his brothers, overlooked by the prophet, but he wasn't overlooked by his God. And it doesn't matter who overlooks you as long as God sees you. God's favor produces recognition even when it seems like you are the least likely to receive it. And I am here to tell somebody a decision has already been made about you. God's already made his decision. You are the one. You're going to bring the solution to the problem. And yes, just hang on in there because somebody is about to say your name, say your name, say your name, and it's going to propel you into your destiny. A matter of fact, I challenge you when I count to three to just release your name in the atmosphere. Come on, one, two, three, say your name. Hey. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Your name is about to come up. Your name is about to come up for the promotion. Your name is about to come up with the banker. Your name is about to come up with the realtor. Come on, one, two, three, say your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get your name in the atmosphere. Now, the enemy would love for you at a time like this uh, to have an attitude uh, and say, well, I'm not going to come in. I'm going to make them wait uh, just like they made me wait. Uh, but I hear God saying, no, child, uh, when they call for you, you got to move. Uh, because even though uh, they may be trying to use you, uh, what I'm doing, uh, I'm using them to promote you. Come on here, somebody. So don't take it personal. Just know that it's all about God. Favor sent for you and favor is going to promote you. I hear God saying, tell my people you're about to have a Rehoboth moment. Say, well, what are you talking about? They told you there was no place for you. There was no room for you to move up. There was no way for you to be blessed but I hear God saying Rehoboth he's making room for you he's making room for you on your job he's making room for you with the bank he's making room for you with the mortgage company he's making room for you in the classroom come on somebody open up your mouth and declare Rehoboth it's my time he's making room for you in areas that are not on your resume. He's promoting you beyond your imagination. Open up your mouth right where you are and begin to give God some praise. It is your time. It is your hour. It is your opportunity. I stand before you right now and I decree and declare with the power of the almighty God that everything the enemy has tried to use against you is now canceled in the name of Jesus the assignment of the enemy over your life over your children over your finances over your body has been canceled you need to open up your mouth and declare I'm taking and what belongs to me victory is yours come on and take it deliverance is yours come on and take it healing is yours come on and take it open up your mouth and give him some praise you've got to understand something when God is saying it's your time and you are taking it by force you can never fail to give God the praise do you hear me today come on here Jesus house do you hear me you've got to praise him even when it seems like your back is up against the wall you've got to praise him you've got to allow your praise to outrun 
run what's trying to hold you captive. You got to let the devil know I will bless the Lord and I'm going to bless him at all times because his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. It's time for you to open up your mouth right where you are and begin to give God the glory, begin to give him the honor and the praise because the Bible says he dwells, he takes up a residence, he gets an address in the midst of the praises of his people and some of you are feeling isolated because you won't open up and give him praise but he said if you draw nigh unto me I'll draw nigh unto you if you just begin to praise me you'll know that you're not in it by yourself I'm reminded of a story about a grandfather who goes to visit his grandson when he gets there his daughter tells him said now your grandchild he's in the playpen I got him in the playpen because I'm trying to teach him a lesson now daddy you can talk to him but you can't get him out the playpen now mama walks out the room and the granddaddy picks the baby up when she comes back she says I told you to leave him in the playpen and when she puts him back in there she walks away she hears him crying and then he shuts up she said now daddy wait a minute now he shut up because you standing there with him in your arms he she said let me tell you something you raised me the way you wanted to raise me now you gotta let me raise mine the way I want to raise mine I don't care how much he hollers don't get him out of that playpen she walks out of the room the baby is screaming hysterically that all of a sudden she hears quietness she gets ready to go in here and tell her daddy off but when she gets in the room she doesn't see what she thought she was going to see she was prepared to see her daddy holding that baby outside the playpen but granddaddy had climbed over and got in the playpen with his granddaddy son and had him in his arms. He said before you say anything you told me I couldn't get him out but you didn't tell me I couldn't get in here with him I'm here to tell somebody if you praise him he'll get in there with you. If you praise him he will step in if you praise him he will Open up your mouth and give him some praise. Y'all playing with it. You playing with it. You playing with it. Come on. Open up and give him some praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh uh. Come on. We can do better than that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Before I take my seat, I just need about 21 people that'll just step out from where you are. I know we tied up in here, but I'll just as if you can step in the aisle, step in the aisle. If you can't do nothing but move where you are, move where you are. But for the next 60 seconds, forget about what you're going through and open up your mouth and start giving him some praise. Come on, oh, oh, in the balcony. Yeah. Come on, uh, ta, na, ra, ba, ba, sa, ta. I speak victory over your life. I speak deliverance over your life. I speak a way out of no way over your life. I speak a turnaround over your children. I speak a turnaround in your finances. I speak a turnaround in your home. I speak a turnaround in your mind. The devil is a liar. You shall not die, but you shall live. 
to declare the works of the Lord. I command you, hallelujah, to walk in your authority. I command you to take it by force. I command you to tell the devil, let me go. Get out of my way. I'm coming through in the name of the Lord. Come on and give him some praise. Turn to somebody real quick. Turn to somebody real quick. Take him by both hands. Look at my ball to eyeball. Tell him, say, neighbor, today is your day of victory, power, and deliverance. You are the one walk in it. You are the one take it by force. You are coming out of everything that had you bound. I know you're coming out because I'm coming out and I've got your hands and when I come out I'm going to pull you along with me. Now snatch him out. Say, come on out of there. 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 Snatch him out. Tell him come on out of there. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. Now give him some praise. Are you oh, Hallelujah. Let's bless the name of the Lord for Pastor Sandra Riley. I'm back. Your sister is back. Listen. I, I, I didn't tell you about this, but I do have some ministry product that is going to be available. They're going to have me, I believe, in the lobby area, and I want you to stop by the table. I have, I have two products that I call resource tools, okay? One is the Lifestyle for Ministry. It's a five-CD disc set along with a workbook that will assist you in any area of ministry, all right? You don't have to just be a preacher. It'll help you and assist you in any area of ministry. I, I, I talk about your calling, your character. I talk to you about ministry protocol. I even discuss your, your social media image. I talk to you even about my journey as an evangelist. That is available for you. And then there is one that I want the ladies to hear about. I have another product out there. And, and, and the question that I often ask before I tell you what it is, I say, is there ever a time when you look in the mirror and you, don't, you no longer see the woman who had goals and dreams and aspirations, but you see somebody that you're disappointed with, someone that, that you feel that did not uh, uh, exceed like they were supposed to or succeed as they were supposed to? Have you ever felt like you might have missed it? Hmm. Have you settled for your plan B instead of God's plan A? If that's you, ladies, then you have become the other woman. You are not the woman that you know God intended for you to be. And I have a CD and a workbook entitled How to Handle the Other Woman. The other woman is you. You never get too old. It's too late for you to go back to school. It's not too late for you to resurrect your dreams. It's not too late for you to do those things that you feel that passed you by. How to handle 
the other woman and lifestyle for ministry. God bless you.